What's going on everybody? Welcome back to ICMB Drives Edition. Today, we're going to get into a topic I kind of never wanted to talk about, but it's been coming up quite lately. So let me just say it to you like this. Um, I went to a car meet on April 3rd, and I met a I met a guy who was really cool. And one of the things he asked me was, he started asking me about my C8. He really liked it, he admired it. And then, not only that, somebody else came over the driver of a Lamborghini Gallardo and we had a nice conversation about like the performance and things of that nature and his car was nice and so forth you've probably seen it in one of my videos before but my point is the topic and the question came up is the C8 a supercar so what I learned then and I try like I said I tried to stay out this conversation but let's do what we do best let's talk about it So like I said, I was in a conversation with two guys and we were talking about is the C8 a supercar. So what I learned then is you can ask 5, 10, 20 different individuals the definition of what is a supercar and you won't get the same answer. As I'm standing here with these two guys and they're trying to define what a supercar is, I start to realize there's truly no clear definition of what a supercar is. And that's what's making this a very interesting topic. If you ask me, the term supercar often gets thrown around with the word exotic. So exotic cars and supercars kind of blur the same line. And because of that, a lot of times people will consider an exotic car a supercar or a supercar an exotic car, which technically they're really not the same. So when you ask me, what is the definition of a supercar? I'm just gonna tell you, I've learned this so far. I learned that it's subjective and it's blind prejudice. And what I mean by blind prejudice, when I ask people what's a supercar, and I've did this over two years ago, people would tell you it has to be a V10. Um, it's about the price. It's about the brand. It has to be mid-engine. It has to have excessive horsepower. It has to have performance. It has to be not practical, um, possibly rare. Um, not mass produced, has to have excellent high top speed or has to have a high top speed that isn't usually common for a regular car, has to have crazy acceleration, a car that can perform on a track and outperform the common sports car. So there is no broadly agreed upon definition of what a supercar is. And I'm sure if I ask many of you, what is a supercar? or tell me what must the car have to be considered a supercar, I'm sure you can add to this list. And this list was only the most common things I heard. So maybe that should be part of the underlying basic definition of a supercar. We can talk about that too. Since there is no true distinction or distinct way to actually identify or qualify a supercar, that's why I said subjective and blind prejudice. Prior to 2020, most people said a supercar had to be a mid-engine vehicle. I think after 2020 that changed because the CA Corvette came out. And there is still a lot of people who don't want to consider the CA Corvette a supercar. But even with that mid-engine classification, the question always came back and said, well, do you not consider a Ferrari F12 a supercar? and people had to sit back. Some people respond, well, yeah, that's a supercar. So does that mean the Ferrari F12 is an exotic? Which if you ask me, if it's not a supercar, then maybe it falls more into the exotic category, which again, I tell you that line is kind of blurred because most people will categorize every Ferrari 
as a supercar except the one, and for some reason, that's the California. Now, I don't know why they wouldn't classify the California as a supercar, but then again, I think, honestly, at the end of the day, it falls into a whole other category. I think that's Ferrari's true attempt at being a luxury roadster, but we can get to that another day. Then when it comes to performance, people say a supercar must have an outstanding power to weight ratio. The acceleration has to be jaw dropping, slam you back in the seat acceleration. It has to have a top speed of over 180. So I think that's actually unique because if you look at it from that parameter, it knocks out a lot of what I call high end build cars. For instance, like, you know, the BMW 6 Series had an M6, or the BMW 8 Series had an M8, which this car does perform well, but unless you get certain versions, most of them top out at 145 miles an hour or 155 miles an hour. So all that pure acceleration you get in the lower gears doesn't really matter if you run into a hiccup at 145 miles an hour. And I laugh at this because I actually was once in a, a car race with a guy on a closed circuit, of course, and he had a BMW M series. And yes, he took off. This was back when I had my C7. But the problem was his governor kicked in and I blew past him and just left him. So it's like you have all that power, you, you know, but what good does it do if you're not in a short closed race? You just got a lot of power that's reduction on performance. So that's another topic. Let's get into that later. And then another category that always seems to get me is people will say, oh, it has to be a V10 or a V12. So then I take the step back and I ask, well, what about the Audi R8 that first came out Gen 1 wheels a, a V8? And then it's like, well, yeah, that's a supercar. But you're saying, then what about the Viper? Well, no, the Viper's not a supercar. So I feel like that's that blind prejudice again. Whereas if it's American made, it can't be a supercar. And maybe that's just it. A lot of people would like to say a supercar has to be foreign. So America couldn't build a supercar. But then when you think about it like that, is the Ford 500 a supercar? I think you can't deny that it is. So I guess when it comes to supercar, it's really getting to the price. And I feel like most people that own supercars want their supercars to be truly unattainable. And so the price becomes the factor. And since the Ford 500 has a real supercar price, people are willing to accept it as a supercar because the everyday guy or Joe can't go get one. So let's talk about the price factor when it comes to a supercar. When I ask people what makes a supercar or what categorizes a supercar, I usually hear somewhere in the six-figure range. Well, that was even prior to the C8 coming out. But then, like, you have the ZR1 pushing out 707 horses, the C7, of course, and it had a high price tag, like 128000 So did that meet the supercar cut? A lot of people say no. But we know it was one of the craziest cars that GM has ever built in a Corvette body. So if you're not trying to eliminate, so I guess if you're looking to eliminate American-made mass-produced cars from the supercar cut, then the price plays a factor. Although an Audi R8 or a Porsche, which is, here we go with that blind prejudice, may or may not be considered a supercar depending on who you ask but the porsche has that price tag and that performance that gets respect in the supercar market and to me if you want to categorize the porsche as a supercar it's one of the more mass produced supercars on the market let's take a moment please hit the like and subscribe like the video if you haven't done it already but please share the video if you enjoy it also, subscribe to the channel. We talk about all type of information when it comes to dealing with cars. 
And I think it's a fun channel to enjoy and see some content from. So please subscribe to the channel. By the way, if you haven't heard, again, the ICMV Drivers Edition $250 gas card giveaway, gas prices are going up and you shouldn't have to make life-changing decisions while you're sitting at the pump. So we're trying to help out with that. Buy a raffle ticket, enter to win $250 and free gas gift cards. You can also participate in this by going to the website and buying some merchandise between May 2nd and July 15th. And for every $5 you spend, it will be matched off with the same equivalence you would get if you bought raffle tickets. So check it out. There's a link in the description below. We're giving away $250 in gas cards. So you can purchase a raffle ticket on your own or you can get some merch. But either way, you will be answered to win. Let's get back to the video. And just talking about mass produced production cars on the market, there comes that rare factor. So again, if you want to exclude the Porsche 911, which gets a lot of respect in the supercar market, then I think it's come along the lines of being more subjective again. But here's my question to you. Who truly makes the term or determines what is rare when it comes to a car. I'm going to get into this because I think this is one of the key factors, and I say key factors, in this whole supercar situation. But not only do we talk about rareness, I have also get told it has to be a brand. And that was the first time I've ever heard that, that it has to be a brand. And what do I mean by being a brand? I was told Ferrari makes supercars. I was told Lamborghini makes supercars. I was told McLaren makes supercars. So when you say brand, what they're saying is that's what this brand is known for, producing high performance vehicles, AKA supercars. But if that's the case, then you are definitely excluding Porsche. You are excluding the Acura NSX. You're excluding the Audi R8. So you still have other brands that don't make supercars that still produce supercars. So like I told you before, when I come to realize the requirements are really prejudiced and centered around the fact that most people want to exclude the Corvette and the Viper or American-made high-performance cars from the category of being a supercar because they're more common for the everyday Joe. Now, speaking of the everyday Joe and a Corvette and a Viper, do you really think the C8 is a supercar? Let me know in the comments your thoughts about this. But I'm going to tell you this. Here's what we know about the C8. The C8 has a base cost of 63,000. Uh, the top speed on a non C51 is 194 miles per hour. The Z51 has about 184, 186 miles per hour. It gives you crazy performance on the zero to 60 times. You get 2.9 seconds. It offers a mid-engine platform. It goes, the zero to 100 is also very impressive. It's the 90 to about 150 where you feel the power loss or should I say it's underpowered. Um, it's a V8 pushing out 490 horsepower to 495 stock. But there's a few aftermarket upgrades you can really get that's cost efficient to boost that number up as well. So how does it stand up to other supercars? Actually, quite well, depending on the supercar. A part of the reason this whole conversation came into play, or the reason why I made this video, is if you're looking at the C8 zero to 60 times, the performance actually outperforms a lot of supercars in its base form. That's big. In the quarter mile run, there's a lot of videos out there and you'll be surprised at how it actually stands up against the 2017 Acura NSX, the Audi Gen 1 V8 version, even the V10, the McLaren MP4 or 570S, which are all categorized or well-known entry-level supercars. When you get the C8 with the Z51 version, 
you'll be very surprised to realize it becomes a very track capable vehicle that performs quite well against other entry level supercars. Now, what really was a game changer, or depending on how you view it, because like I say, it's all blind prejudice. When the C8 first came out, a lot of the videos I saw released were the C8 going up against Lamborghini Huracans and SVJs and things of that nature, which truthfully, the Lamborghini pretty much handled the C8 quite well and rather easily. But you also learned a lot about the Corvette base model C8 and how it truly stood up to a true supercar. Despite being pretty much manhandled or dismantled in these videos, the C8 still showed great performance and got a lot of respect in the supercar market. When we look at different regions around the world, the Corvette C8 was meant to be sold in other markets. So a lot of these classifications about we say about rareness, well, the C8 is actually rare in the European market. It's rare in the Asian market. It's quite rare in the Australian market. So just because you don't consider it rare in the American market doesn't mean the C8 isn't a rare vehicle. And that gets to the whole purpose that sparks me to do this video. There are several foreign review shows coming out because they're finally starting to get the C8 in their area and they're weighing in on the actual performance of the C8. And many are quite surprised at what the C8 can do in its base form of a Z51. There's a video out there where they put a Corvette C8 up against a Ferrari 458. And Everybody knows, because I was even educated at one point, that the 458 Ferrari is supposed to be the pinnacle of supercars with the exhaust note, the performance, and so forth, and yada, yada, yada. And not only did they put up against a Ferrari 458, they put up against the Ferrari 458 Special. It wasn't even the BS Ferrari, it was the good Ferrari. Now, I know this Ferrari is a vehicle that's up 10 years old, but what we still learned is, and go out and look at this video. I think it was from uh, Carwell. Look it up. What you really learned quickly is that it wasn't like the Ferrari was destroying the C8. You were talking about the difference of 0 0.10 tenths of a second to 0 0.3 tenths of a second. And to me, that is amazing performance from a vehicle that so many people say it's just the base model. If that's what the base model can do, I'm cringing at what these upcoming higher performance variants can do. The one thing I took away from watching this video is looking at what the C8 cost and what you get for your value. The C8 truly earned my respect and it showed it deserves the classification of a supercar. Now, whether people will actually honor it that's a whole different subject. But one thing I will sit there and say to you that even if the Corvette C8 is the worst supercar on the market for the cost, for its performance, it's right there. If you don't want to honor the classification of a supercar for the Corvette C8, to me it always comes back to these two key points. The classification of a supercar is subjective and blind prejudice. And the reason why you don't want to give it that is because people want to feel exclusive. So at the end of the day, if you ask me what is the definition of a supercar, I say a supercar isn't about stats or performance. It's about a mindset. And does the Corvette C8 provide that mindset to most Supercar owners, they will say no. But what I don't like about the comparison is there are so many people that want to say the Corvette base C8 isn't a supercar, but the Z06 is, or the ZR1 will be, and I don't believe in it. I don't believe in you sitting there saying that the base Huracan isn't a supercar. The base Audi R8 isn't a supercar because people consider the R8 V8 a supercar, even though there was a V10 version that outperformed the V8 version quite well. So you don't say the R8 V8 isn't a supercar, but the V10 is. 
So why do you want to say the C8 base model isn't a supercar, but the C8 Z06 V8 is? Because you might get a little bit more performance out of it. That's no difference than you sitting saying, this is a Lamborghini Huracan, this is a Huracan Evo, this is a Huracan Performante, this is a Huracan STO. You just get more stronger versions of the supercar. And so that's what I see with the Corvette C8. So again, do I truly believe the Corvette C8 is a supercar? Considering I was looking at supercars and the Corvette stole me away from two pretty much base classification of supercars because of its performance style and so forth and ever, yes, I do. I consider the Corvette C8 a supercar. Even if it's the worst supercar on the market, it's still the best supercar you can buy for entry level. That's my thoughts. Let me know what you think. I see every driver's edition. Please hit the like and subscribe. Don't forget to share the video. This is a really interesting topic, and I'm sure people are going to have some things to say. So let me see what you got to say. Tell me your thoughts. But until then, as always, stay blessed, be safe, and I'll see you in these streets. Peace. I see every driver's edition. Please hit the like and subscribe button. Join the I see every driver's edition community. Thank you guys for tuning in again.